The Tenth Amendment. The Tenth Amendment works in the opposite direction. Just because the Ninth Amendment says that just because it's not written down doesn't mean you can't. The Tenth Amendment says the powers not delegated to the United States by the Constitution, nor prohibited to the United States by the states, are reserved to the states respectively or to the people. Well, that is a really, if I was an English teacher, that sentence, I mean, I would send it after school. Basically, what it means is that we the people are sovereign. We, the people, created the state governments. The state governments then created the federal government. We, the people, are on top. We are the source of all political power in the country. We can alter or abolish the federal government. <coughs> can we alter or abolish the state governments? You betcha. And in some cases, that probably ought to happen. Illinois ought to have another look at that Second Amendment and, you know, get a grip. So, imagine we the people with like 100% of our rights. And because we want to organize stuff and, you know, take care of the agriculture, we create a state government and we give the state government maybe 10% of our power. And the state governments get together and they take 10% of what they have, which is really 1% of our power, and give that to the federal government. Who has the authority in this situation? We the people with 90, the state governments with 9, or the federal government with 1? 1% 1 of the power. If the Constitution was working the way that it was supposed to, asking you what city the federal government was in would be a radio trivia question. <laughs> All right, we're here in WGN, and we got our daily, you know, we're going to give away free tickets to the Blackhawks game. If you can tell me what city the federal government is in. Oh, gosh, I used to know that. <laughs> the federal government is supposed to be really, really small. Article 1, Section 4, Clause 3 says that Congress must convene at least once a year. Excuse me? Congress must convene at least once a year? Why would the Founding Fathers waste the time and ink to write that? If Congress was doing what Congress is supposed to do, they would be limited to Article 1, Section 8. We can create an army. Yeah, we've already done that. Well, we can create a navy. Well, we've done that too. We can control post offices and post roads. Well, okay, we'll build another one here, here, and here. What else? I guess it's time to go home. <laughs> we, the people, are the source of all political power. We, the people, have rights, unalienable rights. <clears throat> you cannot give them away. Now, you can sit and cower in terror because the government had a piece of paper that said, or you can stand up and defend your rights. <coughs> it's our job. We have the rights. We also have the responsibility. And we the people have been shirking our responsibility. We're going to let somebody else do it. In fact, as a presidential candidate, the one phrase that I heard most often, you know what you ought to do, I ought to do. I ought to do this, I ought to do that, I ought to do something else. I said, you ought to run for president yourself. You can run your campaign any way you want. This is my campaign. But again, we the people have a great responsibility. Most of what our government does today is unconstitutional. I wish that our parents had stopped it and cleaned it up. I wish that our grandparents had put a halt to FDR and the New Deal. I wish that, you know, people 
during the Civil War had paid more attention to the Constitution. I wish that I could live my life and pursue happiness by jumping out of perfectly good airplanes on weekends. But I can't. That was then. This is now. And it's now our responsibility to fix it. And I don't want our children and our grandchildren going, why didn't you do something? Why didn't you fight back while you still had a chance? At some point in time, I anticipate that I will be standing on a cloud somewhere, and Thomas <coughs> Jefferson is going to come up to me, and he's going to look me in the eye and ask me, Michael, what did you do to fight for liberty? I am not going to stand there and say, well, I was really busy. I had a softball game to go to, and you know, skydiving was just more important. If I ever meet Thomas Jefferson and look him in the eye, I'm going to be able to tell him I did everything, everything I possibly humanly could think of. I ran for president. I ran for Congress. I had a radio program trying to light the fires of liberty. Hell, look at all the bullet holes. <laughs> Liberty is our responsibility. The first step in defending your rights is to know your rights. Thank you so much for your time and your time.